Hi, my name is Joe Kotze with Eventide, and I'm going to take you on a tour of the black hole pedal. As an Eventide algorithm, Black Hole made its debut in our previous flagship studio processor, the DSP4000 Ultra Harmonizer. It's a reverb larger than typical hall and room verbs, capable of cathedral-type spaces to out-of-this-world soundscapes. It's got onboard tone controls, modulation, and built-in infinite reverb capabilities. It became such a widely used effect that, eventually, we adapted it into a 10-parameter algorithm for our space and H9 pedals. We later released Black Hole as part of the H9 series plugins you can use in your favorite iOS or desktop DAWs. We're now introducing Black Hole as a dedicated stomp box with mono or stereo I.O., guitar or line level operation, MIDI capabilities, preset storing, and most importantly, a new compact, easy to use interface. On the front panel, we see six knobs that access the primary controls. Mix, gravity, feedback, size, and low and high EQ controls. To access the secondary parameters delineated in dark gray, press the page button on the top right. With the LED lit, turn the knobs to access parameters like delay, Q, depth, rate, and output level. If we press it again, the LED turns off, indicating the primary parameters are once again your top-level controls. Turning the mix knob, we're able to adjust the balance between dry and wet level. Keep in mind that if you're fully dry, the signal is still being processed in the background. At fully clockwise, you'll only hear the effects of the black hole, no dry signal. The gravity knob is where things get really interesting. It's split into two decay modes. As we sweep forward through its positive range, we go from a short, dense decay to a very long and smooth decay. Sweeping through the negative gravity range will take a long, smooth reverse reverb and shorten the rise and decay times of its inverse tail. It's important to know that gravity has a symbiotic relationship with the size knob. Think of the size knob as controlling the size of your space, and when it's fully clockwise, it sounds as big as the universe. Now, think of the gravity knob as the behavior of the reverb's decay within that space. For example, with gravity turned all the way up in the positive range, we see Black Hole's long and smooth reverb tail. By moving the size knob fully counterclockwise, we can go from a cosmically epic reverb to a cartoonishly small room instantaneously. I repeat, size scales the overall length of the decay, or inverse decay, while gravity adjusts the behavior of the decay within that space. Let's listen to the positive gravity range. To hear this relationship clearly, I'll use the first preset, but remove any feedback. I'll begin with a really small size setting and the low positive gravity. Sounds like a really bright room with some strong reflections. Now, if I take the gravity and put it halfway, I maintain the characteristic of that bright room, but with a longer decay time. Let's max out the gravity. You'll notice at these extreme size and gravity settings, it begins to sound a little metallic. I want to point out early on that you can use Black Hole's onboard tone controls to shape the characteristic of your reverb. So in this case, I can take the brightness down a little bit and add some warmth. And now your reverb sounds like this.
taking things a step further, you can page over to the secondary parameters where you can find black holes modulation depth and rate controls. Add some to add a little bit of warmth, smooth out the decay, and add some motion. Kind of sounds like plate reverb there. I'll talk more about EQ and modulation in depth later in the video. For now, let me return to my original settings by removing the modulation and putting the EQ controls back to their midpoint. Now I can take the size control, put it somewhere in the middle, and once again start off with a low positive gravity setting. Here we get into hall type reverbs. Now as I increase the gravity, I increase the decay, but also add articulation to the attack. Max out the gravity. Here we get a cathedral type verb with some good articulation. Now if you take the size knob and put it all the way up, this is where we can take your sound into outer space. Now pay attention to what a low gravity setting does. It kind of smears the attack like being in an enclosed space. Think of uh, a room or a hall reverb, right? Now if I max out the gravity, you'll notice there's a longer decay time, but also a more defined attack. Now, I'll go back down to a low positive gravity and play a different line just for comparison. And back up to high positive gravity. You can see that even in the extreme end, it pulls what sounds like dry signal through, even during busy passages. At these longer decay times, the algorithm allows the articulation to shine through without getting in the way of the reverb tail. It's this balance that really makes black holes special. The negative gravity range sounds very different. As we turn gravity to the left from center, we adjust an inverse decay of a really big reverb. More negative gravity sucks the reverb tail down increasingly on either side. Lower negative gravity will stretch out the length of the reverse reverb rise time. Still, the relationship between size and gravity is maintained, where size basically scales the overall inverse decay in all these cases. So let's listen to what this sounds like beginning with the size all the way down and a low negative gravity. Notice how the dry signal sounds attached to the reverb. But as we move the gravity knob counterclockwise, you begin to hear a gap between the original signal and the inverse reverb. At the extreme setting, it almost sounds like it's pulling dry signal through to give the inverse reverb a pronounced peak. Now this becomes even more apparent as we increase the size. As we move the gravity knob clockwise, the inverse reverb begins to have a, a smoother rise and fall. If we go back to the counterclockwise extreme, you hear that gap between the dry signal and the inverse reverb.
move it back clockwise and connect the drive signal with the reverb. Now, if you take the size knob and turn it all the way up, at this low negative gravity setting, you can hear Black Hole's silky smooth long inverse reverb tail. If we move the gravity knob counterclockwise, you put some distance in between the dry signal and the defined pronounced inverse reverb peak. Remember, if you move back towards the midpoint past 12 o'clock, you get back into regular decay territory for a more traditional sounding reverb. The secondary control on the gravity knob is the delay parameter, which controls the amount of pre-delay before the onset of the reverb. By default, this ranges from 0 to 2000 milliseconds. If you engage the MIDI clock function in the system settings, this will allow Black Hole to respond to MIDI tempo from an external device. You'll also have access to subdivisions that are mapped along the delay knob. But the key thing to remember about pre-delay on Black Hole is that lower gravity settings tend to smear the onset of the reverb. And higher gravity settings allow for distinct echoes, like being in a big canyon. The same goes for the negative gravity range. At a lower negative gravity, you smear the onset of the reverb. And at higher negative gravity, you get that gap. Typically, we find feedback controls on delay, but this design takes the signal from the entire reverb structure, puts it through Black Hole's unique algorithm, and then feeds it to the pre-delay, extending your sound from huge to infinite. Here, I'm using a mid-size inverse reverb setting with about a second of pre-delay. Adding feedback makes the reverb more dense, warmer, and longer. Jumping over to the positive gravity range, you can even introduce delay taps into your tail if gravity is set high and there's enough pre-delay. Size down, you can make Black Hole give you more of a straight delay. Notice the infinity and freeze icons on the rightmost position of the knob. Both of these yield infinite reverb with the distinction that, in infinity mode, the incoming signal gets fed into the reverberation structure as it's held in place. You can still layer on top of what's being held. Turning fully clockwise to freeze mode, the incoming signal is not fed into the reverb structure, allowing you to play atop the suspended tail without layering. Both infinite 
reverb types will also be held in place even if black hole is bypassed. The mix knob allows you to control the balance of the signal at the input with the suspended reverb. Here I've mapped the mix parameter to an expression pedal to control the balance. It's recommended that for the most pristine infinite reverb, either mod depth or mod rate must be turned down to zero. As you experiment with settings, you can use the low and high tone controls to add character to the reverb tail. The EQ section behaves identical to the shelving filters found on Eventide's Ultra Channel plugin. Only difference, the pedal has set corner frequencies. Low controls the level of frequencies below 350 Hz at minus 18 to plus 9 dB, and high the level of frequencies above 2000 Hz at minus 18 to plus 12 dB. To further sculpt the behavior of the filters, you can engage the secondary function of the feedback button to access the Q control, adding a resonant bump in the curve for a more filtered sound. Be careful, as extreme settings will increase the chances of overloads. When high and low are set in the middle, Q has no effect on the sound. The low, high, and Q controls affect the signal after the reverb. Use them to do things like add airiness, clear up some low end rumble, or accentuate a portion of the reverb spectrum. Another way to add character to your reverb is using the onboard modulation. It's actually built into the reverb itself, and it's implemented as more of a big multi-voice chorus. Here's a reverb setting without any modulation. Now I'll add some mod depth and rate. Because it has a warming characteristic, you can use it on extreme settings to smooth out the edges. For example, you can actually get straight chorus sounds if you turn size all the way down and gravity to barely positive. For comparison, I'll play the clean tone and then activate the reverb. Afterward, I'll add some modulation. You can hear how metallic the reverb is. By adding some depth and rate, you can get the modulation to tame the reflections. Let's add some size back in. Depth and rate settings below halfway render more subtle modulation tones. Beyond 12 o'clock on the depth knob, you'll begin to hear the reverb bend in the pitch. If you add more rate, the modulation and pitch shifting begins to smear the reverb tail into a nice dense whirlwind of galactic dust. And finally, the output level allows you to control the volume at the output. Unity gain is achieved at the midpoint, below which you attenuate the signal by minus 18 dB and beyond which you boost it up by 9 dB.
Like all other parameters, output can be mapped to an expression pedal. Black Hole features two footswitches, each with a corresponding LED. The active footswitch serves to engage or bypass the effect. When activated, the corresponding LED will light up. Typically, when an active footswitch is pressed, it latches, or remains in a given state, until it's pressed again. A cool feature of the Black Hole pedal is the ability to change the active footswitch from latching to momentary functionality by pressing the LED above it. When set to momentary, the effect is activated as long as the footswitch is pressed and automatically bypasses when released. But notice that when bypassed, the reverb gets cut off. Black Hole allows you to choose between three different bypass modes, buffered, relay, and DSP plus effects. If your bypass mode is DSP plus effects, the reverb tail will continue to ring out when bypassed, as dry signal passes through the pedal. The factory setting is buffered, so you may want to make the adjustment in system settings, as I'll show you later. The freeze footswitch has two modes, freeze function or preset scroll mode. If the LED button above the footswitch is on, you're in freeze mode. Pressing the footswitch will automatically engage the freeze infinite reverb function. The LED will blink when activated. Remember, in this mode, the incoming signal is not fed into the reverb structure, allowing you to play atop the suspended reverb tail without layering. Press it again, and the reverb will ring out according to your settings. By holding the footswitch pressed for two seconds, you enter preset scroll mode. Consecutive presses will allow you to scroll through presets incrementally. Scrolling past the fifth preset goes back to one. When you land on a preset, the LED on the ladder will blink for five seconds. Within that time, press the active foot switch to recall. Otherwise, the preset scroll will time out and remain on the current settings. Upon activating, the LED will turn solid. Though the pedal can only access five presets, it can keep up to 127 in its memory. By connecting the pedal via USB to a computer, you can use the Eventide Device Manager application to view, edit, and select presets from a list. Move them into or out of your top five slots so that later you can access them on the pedal. EDM also allows you to create and restore backups of your entire list and to import and export individual presets to your computer. Please note that if you choose a preset on EDM that is outside of the top five, the last two LEDs on the pedal's preset ladder will be lit. Apart from showing which mode you're in, the freeze button also serves to save presets. To save your current settings, press and hold the freeze button. The ladder, active button, and freeze button LEDs will blink. Press and release the freeze button to select a location for your preset from one to five. Press and release the active button to save the preset the LEDs will stop blinking. The current preset LED will stay lit. Save mode times out after a few seconds. Pressing either foot switch also exits save mode. One last note on foot switches and buttons. The pedal will remember the last state of the LED buttons when the pedal is turned off. So it'll remember if the active button was in latching or momentary mode, whether the freeze button was in preset scroll mode or freeze mode, and whether or not the page button was engaged. So always pay attention to whether or not it's lit to determine which parameters the knobs are controlling. It's also important to note that anytime you make an adjustment on the front panel after a preset has been loaded, the preset ladder will blink once indicating the preset has been modified. At this point, you should save your changes or risk losing them when you move to another preset.